The aim of this production is to highlight some of my favourite and key parts for the more casual visitor. Whilst there is some narration, it is hoped you will enjoy our mainly pictorial look at the Chesterfield Canal. We start at the point where it meets the River Trent, on its west bank three miles north of Gainsborough. West Stockwith and its basin still show some signs of its industrial heritage, but now is a popular mooring location. There were, until recently, Two pubs in the village. The White Art, now closed and up for sale sadly, even had its own microbrewery. The Waterfront Country Park campsite sits behind the Waterfront Inn pub and could suit those wishing to stay over, both being adjacent to the basin. West Stockwith is well worth a visit. Whether the aim is to walk, cycle, or visit the canal by boat, you first progress towards Misterton along the Trent Valley Way, which is part of the Cuckoo Way. Being a much larger village, it offers more facilities, including shops and two pubs, but sadly, no canal side pub after the Packet Inn closed and was demolished in 2002. In this section, Walking on the towpath is generally easy. Some parts further on are a little more tricky if cycling, due to overhanging hedges and uneven ground, but all doable with care. Disabled access with a mobility scooter, however, could be more challenging in certain areas. Continuing past the two locks and under Swallow and Wharf Bridges will bring you to Cooper's Bridge, which being at the periphery of the village would appear to mark the start of a more open countryside. Like so many places along the canal, Walkeringham also had an industrial past. This being mainly the brickworks and its wharf adjacent to the canal. The last load carried is recorded as being in 1954. The site has been redeveloped for commercial use, although there was a proposal for a marina. All that is left today is the chimney. Approaching Shorelock, the canal is approximately three quarters of a mile from Gringley on the hill and takes on a more attractive look and feel. The lock area itself and Shore Bridge on a nice day is a lovely spot to while away some time and even have a picnic. Construction began in 1771 and paved the way for some quite adventurous if not pioneering engineering. Engineered by James Brindley, who is said to be the father of English canals, it was completely opened in 1777, enabling the transport of a variety of goods, including coal, bricks, iron ore and malt. But Brindley sadly died before its completion in 1772. The canal opened up Chesterfield, Worksop, Retford and smaller settlements to the rest of the country via the River Trent. 
Pleasant open countryside all round gives the feeling of space and inner calm. Another brickyard thrived alongside the canal, but again, sadly, little remains. About half a mile further along we come to Gringley Top Lock, a bridge and the charm in former lock keeper's cottage. Again for me this is possibly one of the more attractive locations on the whole canal. There is the Blue Bell Inn in Gringley Village, but unfortunately it is approximately three quarters of a mile from the canal with a steep climb towards the end. The approach to Draycoles from Gringley is an attractive and peaceful walk and shouldn't be rushed. Designated as a site of special scientific interest, be sure to keep an eye out for wildlife along the way. We filmed this section in autumn, so it perhaps takes on an even more attractive look. It's fair to say the A631 bridge carrying traffic over the canal can occasionally spoil the tranquillity of this section. As the Draycoles Tunnel comes into view, you can see the towpath veering off to the right as the canal cuts through Cuckoo Hill. Originally, before vessels were powered, passage through the tunnel would have been by so-called legging it. That is by propelling the boat along by laying down and using the legger's feet up against the wall in a walking motion. On smaller tunnels such as Draycoles, this was usually done by the owner and crew. Many canal tunnels were built without a towpath to save money by not having to create such a large bore. Over Cuckoo Hill we come to an area which has been awarded a green flag for its green space. Some picnic benches and a pleasant grassed area make this another ideal location for a break. The Duck, formerly the Griff Inn, is open for refreshments. Draycoles without doubt doesn't disappoint. Wyston is a small village with a country estate. Ladies Bridge crosses the estate land, although the towpath is accessible, deviating from it isn't. That can't be said for Wyston Top Bridge. After passing underneath, a pleasant area emerges with a thoughtful bench seat and grassed area. We hope this fisherman's peace wasn't interrupted, although he did catch this small perch while we were chatting to him.
approaching Clayworth from the north enables you to exit the canal at Grays Bridge. An attractive village with much character with only the Brewer's Arms pub remaining open at the time of this production. If you stay on the towpath and continue along the Cuckoo Way, the canal skirts the whole of Clayworth on the east side with open countryside to the west. An ideal walk is to circumnavigate the village and canal. Clayworth is also home to the Retford and Worksop Boat Club, who have extensive mooring facilities on both sides of Clayworth Bridge. Moving further along towards Retford brings you to Hayton, which is a small village with the very popular boat inn at the canal side. Just two and a half miles from Retford, Hayton runs parallel to the canal and has some very nice walks not just along the canal but also edging out into the countryside with the adjacent village of Clarborough within easy walking distance. Before arriving in Retford, Whit Sunday Pie Lock is another alluring spot although not quite as quiet due to the A620, which runs relatively close by. The lock's legendary name is believed to be given by navvies who built the lock. They carried on working on Whit Sunday and were served a home-baked pie by the lady who lived in the cottage. Thus, the name Whit Sunday Pie Lock. Who knows, I'm sure there are many versions as to how the name came to be. Still in Nottinghamshire, Retford is an appealing small market town and is said to be one of the oldest in England. Its first charter being granted in 1246 by Henry III. With plenty of parking close to the canal, there is easy access particularly for the less mobile. It is a pleasant walk along the towpath and it is easy to forget you are only a few minutes from the town and its amenities. There is a small marina, but I think the focal point is Town Lock, being the first narrow lock from West Stockwith. Up to this point the canal could be navigated by broad beam boats, which of course could carry larger loads. Not only does Retford have the Chesterfield Canal running through it, there is also the River Idle, along with the London to Edinburgh mainline railway. Retford was known as a centre for nonconformists, as Pilgrims, Baptists and Wesleyans originated from this area and later played a part in the Pilgrim Fathers fleeing to America in 1620, following persecution for their religious beliefs. Between Retford and Worksop, there are fewer access points. It is not so easy at Sutton Lane Bridge, but a better bet is where the old London Road passes over the canal. There is adjacent car parking and it's an easy and pleasant walk in either direction. I can't promise that you'll see any young swallows being fed though. Randby is best access from the A620 running between Retford and Worksop with parking in the village. 
Approaching on the towpath from the north, it would appear to be underused, but is nevertheless attractive. Such a shame there is a constant noise from the busy A1. It is worth noting, staying on the towpath does bring you on the wrong side of the canal to get to the ever popular Checkers Inn pub. Coming off the towpath at the bridge and walking through the village solves the problem. The Seth Ellis trip boat is licensed to carry up to 12 passengers and was purpose built in 2005. Based in Ranby, it can also be chartered with a choice of routes available. Still in Nottinghamshire, approaching the centre of Worksop on the B6040, there is still a rural field, but you realise it is a much larger market town, with mining being its main employer until the 90s, when so many towns saw a sudden decline in employment, thus creating many social problems. But like many others, it has bounced back with large distribution warehouses and manufacturing. Worksop has now lower than average unemployment figures. These ladies at this lock in the area of Bracebridge were confusing me as the narrow boat was facing the wrong way in the lock as the water rose. But after dragging out rubbish that had found its way into the canal, they went on to explain it was done purposefully to enable them to reverse onto their mooring close by. As the canal passes through the town, access is quite restricted with the occasional exception. Heading towards Shire Oaks, Lock 47 hosts a rather attractive area on the south side with the Lock Keeper pub being at its centre. I have to say to me the bridge and Lock together do give quite an interesting look. Shire Oaks hosts a marina which is probably the largest on the canal. Originally a coal loading basin for Shire Oaks Colliery, which was closed in 1990. The marina itself was opened in May 2000, as was the 8 miles of canal west of Worksop. Being fairly recently restored, there is easy access from the marina area and a tarmac pathway. This pathway also forms part of the Sustrans National Cycle Route No. 6. I found this part of the canal very peaceful and attractive and would recommend it to anyone needing easy access for a mobility scooter or wheelchair. Moving further west, we come to Kiverton Park. Heading in a westerly direction, a slope descends down towards this short section of navigable canal, but the track can be quite muddy in places and due to lack of use is quite overgrown, although it didn't seem to hinder this young gentleman. However, going back in the easterly direction, things do improve and become more enjoyable. Within the next few miles beyond Kiverton Park, Navigation ceases, but it is still walkable for the most part with short sections still showing the signs of the canal. But for me, it doesn't have quite the same appeal without the navigable water. With further restoration and building a couple of new routes, it is hoped to be completely open by the end of 2027. This being the canal's 250th anniversary. Donations for this to happen are actively being promoted.
Just to the north of Staveley, you pick up the canal again. Oh, yeah. But I was interested to see the restoration in this section, as two new road bridges had to be built, accommodating Eckington Road and the A6192. Good progress appears to have been made, and it is interesting to see some of the bare bones of the construction. After a short walk, you come to the new Staveley Town Lock, which at the time of my visit looked complete and ready to go. The new Staveley Town Basin opened in 2012, but has yet to see any commercial activity, but I'm sure it will come in time. Progressing further along you come to the Mill Green area, the bridge itself having had quite extensive work done in the early 90s, with extensive dredging being started in 2011. The whole section now looks so well established. It is indeed difficult to imagine you are only yards from the rear of the Morrison's Superstore. This fisherman told me he hadn't had a bite all day and was giving up for the day. But maybe the ducks had more luck. Hollingwood Hub was formerly a lockhouse, and with the aid of a government grant, a coffee shop, amongst other things, has been created. It is also the base of the Chesterfield Canal Trust. Although owned by Derbyshire County Council, it is run by the Canal Trust. With the towpath being on the Transpennine Trail, it of course attracts many cyclists. With its facilities, the hub has been an asset to the area and has increased in popularity. With the trip boat Madeline being purchased in 2020 and being based at the hub, it too attracts many visitors wishing to have a cruise along this section of canal. A lovely spot to while away some time, have a welcome snack and a look round the Chesterfield Canal Trust gift shop. There are two ways to get to Wealdon Mill Lock, this one being via Old Whittington, but the small road down to the parking area is very rough and bumpy. But arriving there is a delight, with good paths running in either direction. Very popular with locals, the bridge links Brimington to Old Whittington. New lock gates shown here were fitted in 2013. Walking in a southerly direction, still on the Cuckoo Way, brings you to the Mill Pub and Car Park, adjacent to the B6050 on Station Road, which I would favour for the canal and also gives access to Blue Bank Pools Nature Reserve. I did for a short way carry on south passing the old Brimington Wharf, 
but turned back as it seemed to be unattractive to me, but some may want to walk the path to Tapton Lock. The Tapton Lock Visitor Centre, run by Derbyshire County Council, not only offers a wide variety of information, but snacks and hot or cold drinks with a pleasant outdoor seating area. Tapton Lock also serves as the trip boat John Varley 2's embarkation point, taking passengers on the five mile journey to Staverley. Built in 2016, it has the advantage of a large foredeck with a wheelchair lift giving access to the less mobile. I sincerely hope you have enjoyed my look at the Chesterfield Canal. Further information about the canal and what it offers can be found on the Chesterfield Canal Trust and Inland Waterway Association websites. Thank you for watching. <laughs>